I'll give an overview of uh, our security program, which includes the you know, security champions and how we went about that. A little bit about me. Uh, I've been with Axway for uh, 10 years, I think coming up uh, actually in April. Uh, I've had prior experience in, in many different areas of uh, technology. Uh, that last one is not actually a piece of garbage systems. It's actually point of sale credit card uh, terminals. So I had some experience with uh, credit card software and, and the point of sale systems that you see in, in stores. Uh, I have the alphabet soup of uh, certifications in the industry. And uh, we'll, we'll jump right into the next slide. So a little bit about Axway and our security program. And I, I wanted to give this as kind of a basis for, for how that ties into um, security champions. Uh, our company has about 11,000 customers across 100 different countries in many key industries. And uh, a lot of those key industries, as you can see, have security requirements. Uh, they, they demand security. Axway is a, is a software vendor. We provide software that uh, governs uh, the flow of information. So it allows, it's a lot of business to business communication. I always kind of joke about Axway being um, the company that you, you never really hear a lot about, but we have um, software deployed in, in many different places across, again, many different key industries uh, because it really is that business to business. It's not really a business to consumer side. So it's not very, it's not very front and center or very visible, but our, our customers uh, are highly dependent on it. They process billions of transactions a day. And, and if our software fails, uh, in some cases, business, their business fails or it stops, it comes to a screeching halt. So, um, a lot of demand for having security in place for the software that we provide our customers. And so as a part of that, we chose to uh, go with uh, and build our security program around BSIM, which is the building security and maturity model. And they provide a, a software security framework that covers four major domains across 12 practices with 125 different activities um, covering governance. Um, they have an intelligence domain. Um, secure software development lifecycle touch points and uh, deployment. And within the governance section, they uh, talk about having a security champions program, either building one or growing upon uh, an existing security champions program. Uh, and so because a lot of our customers are in these industries, and again, uh, when I went and took a look, roughly 20% of the companies that chose to publicly display their names in the BSIM report, are also Axway customers. So this, this is a really big deal for our customers. And this is a way that we can demonstrate, hey, we, you know, we understand that security is important to our customers. Um, we value security and can show that you know, we're, we're, we're putting programs in place. So for our security program, we, uh, I'm a member of the software security group. So our group is responsible for uh, managing the actual uh, secure software development lifecycle program. And we cover various different areas uh, from secure coding training, threat modeling is, is a, a big one for us. It's a requirement uh, as well as the various different tools. And then we also do um, security reviews, but we're a team of six people in an international company. And uh, that's not work that we can do by ourselves. There's, there's so much, you know, we're not actively embedded in the, the development team. So we had to have a way to be able to expand this security activity and, and have the execution of that. So that's where security champions come into play. And internally, we call them SPOCs, our security points of contact. And the, the SPOC picture is actually from our, our Confluence page uh, where we describe what the, what the role is. But the description down below is actually the description that's provided by BSIM. So interested in engaged developers, cloud security engineers, deployment engineers. And so there's many different ways to go about implementing the security champions program. Uh, some are, are done more on a, you know, a volunteer basis. Hey, you know, we, we'd like to go and find someone who can champion the security initiatives and, uh, and they, they uh, have the opportunity to, to volunteer and, and be a part of that. In our situation, because of the type of software that we provide and the demand from our customers around um, building security in, uh, we, we actually chose to make our security champions program a requirement. So every team has to have a security champion assigned. It's, it's part of, the, part of the, um, our SSDLC program. So you know, because we have seven main development sites worldwide, because we have uh, over 100 software products, 
uh, again, that scalability is really important to be able to drive security throughout the organization, throughout the culture, right? It's really important to have that be embedded in the culture. And, uh, and we couldn't do it alone because we're a group of roughly six people. So we, we do drive those guidelines, those best practices, uh, and the items that are, that are required. Uh, but the actual implementation, we rely heavily on the security champions to actually do within their development team. So oftentimes uh, they're wearing dual hats. It's not a dedicated, uh, you know, just doing security activity. They're generally developers who are also doing some security work as well. <clears throat> so I wanted to cover some, you know, some things that we observed as well as some challenges that we've encountered with the way that we chose to implement the security champion program because there is no one way to go about doing this. So I'd mentioned that volunteered versus voluntold. In our situation, again, we chose to make it a requirement of our security program that every team, every development team had to have a security champion. Generally, they also have to have an alternate security champion uh, assigned. And if they don't assign one, then that responsibility automatically falls to the engineering manager. Now there's, there's pros and cons with, again, having someone choose to, to volunteer to be that versus being told to do that. Uh, and one of those is that we noticed anyway, is uh, oftentimes it, it was getting assigned to the junior person on the team, you know, someone who maybe wasn't as interested or as familiar with um, either the product or uh, wasn't as interested in the security aspects. Uh, so that, that can be one of the challenges that you end up facing if you end up making it a requirement is going back to that description that, that BSIM provided around champions of engaged and, and actively interested. If you make it a requirement, that, that may not always happen. So you have to be aware of that. To help um, combat that or to mitigate that risk of, of having that be uh, you know, the issue of, of someone being told that they had to do this activity, we started coming up with ways that we could make the role uh, more uh, palatable, more interesting, right? So we provide additional training to SPOCs. So we have what we call our white belt program that everyone is required to go through uh, if they're hands on keyboard. Uh, but for the security champions specifically, they get additional training that is offered to them uh, where we can actually set up tournaments. It's much more accurate, uh, interactive and engaging. Um, we call it our blue belt program right now. And eventually we're looking to implement uh, a black belt program where for those security champions that are really interested in, in driving security or just interested in the security field at all, right? They still want to do development work, but but uh, but they think security is interesting. We want to we want to be able to reward that activity. So maybe we send them to conferences or uh, something else. We're still trying to decide what the best way is to recognize those that have that interest in security and drive that, right? We want to be able to to drive that because that uh, helps drive security within the the company as a whole. One of the other things we did was was be able to to reward and and uh, recognize when they're doing good work. So we developed what we call our Security Stars program, and this program uh, is actually driven by the community. So the community chooses who they want to nominate, whether it's a team, whether it's an individual. Originally, when we started the program, it was just around the security champions on who were doing you know good work in that case. But we've actually expanded that. We found that it was it was not just security champions that we wanted to recognize for doing good, good work in the security field. So we opened it to everyone in the company. And now we've had you know, people in the support team who happen to find a security issue with uh, a product as they were helping a customer. They've gotten nominated, for example. Uh, if we had a team that may have had, if it was a legacy product, an older product of ours that had a lot of um, security or technical debt and they worked really hard to drive that down, uh, we wanted to recognize the level of effort that they put in because we know that's that's hard work. There's there's a lot of effort that goes into cleaning up that debt. So they get to be uh, nominated by their peers. Uh, and then our group goes and reviews all of the nominations and and then we uh, we recognize them publicly. we We have an internal community website, and we we put postings online to let everyone know in the organization that this team did awesome. And then, we also try to give them some kind of other uh, reward. Maybe it's an Amazon gift card or you know something like that. And picking the rewards is, you know, you you, you have to find what what's going to work with uh, with the different groups and organizations. So, 
Uh, right now, we've chosen to do an, an, an Amazon gift card that seems to work out pretty well so far. Uh, another important thing when you're setting up a program is to have those really clear lines of responsibility. Uh, we, we, sometimes it was a little fuzzy. Uh, going back to that, if you don't assign a Spock, you, um, you, know, you default to an engineering manager. That was something new that we implemented by putting in a RACI chart uh, because uh, developers that sometimes uh, ran into trouble with uh, conflicting priorities, right? You know, engineering managers are pushing features and, and uh, new capabilities within the software product. And the security champions are trying to drive uh, the reduction of security debt or making sure security controls are implemented throughout development. And at one point there was, there was some conflict. So we made sure to, to put in a RACI chart and we got buy-in from everyone, both uh, our executive management and all the engineering managers that, you know, they, the SPOCs are responsible for implementing all of the controls, but ultimately the managers, managers accountable for the activity actually occurring. Uh, Another piece for us was making sure there were clear lines of communication, right? They have to know how to reach out to us. So we have multiple ways that teams can get a hold of us uh, if they have questions, right? Our, our group is primarily that uh, support and advisory. We're here for the developers. We're here to help them be successful. Um, so that, that's really important, you know, having that empathy for the development teams to, to help drive security being a part of their process and uh, making it as easy as possible for the development teams to have security be the part of that. So building the, the narrative uh, is, is one way that you can do that too. help bring them on that security journey with you. Um, so an example of that that we've tried to do is, you know, based on those key industries that I was mentioning, uh, a lot of those industries are products that our employees use directly. So indirectly, the security of our software Im impacts our customers, which impacts the services that not only do our employees use, but our employees' family and friends use. And if you are able to drive that, you know, show the why of security, why this is so important to do, and that it's not just an impact to the company's bottom line, but it could directly impact, you know, the employee or the employee's family and friends or or others in the community, right? That. We want to bring them on that journey with us. That it's that it's uh, there is value. It's important, and it's not it's not all about the bottom line. Uh, and then that executive management support, right? Having that, uh, as I said, we're a support and advisory group. Uh, we are the ones who uh, provide the company with information around the risks that are uh, present. But it's ultimately up to the business to decide on what risk they're willing to accept. So. Uh, you know, we, we have tried to position ourselves again, that we're here for the developers, we're here to support the developers to make them successful. Uh, we want to be empathetic to their situation and, uh, and drive, uh, drive security being as easy as possible to them. But ultimately, uh, we're not the ones that say no, right? We, we provide the info, here's the risks, and then it's up to the, the business to decide what is most appropriate in that situation. So. That, that's just an overview of our security champion program, how we've chosen to implement things. Uh, it's not the only way to go about doing it. There's many other uh, you know, sources of information around uh, security champions. vSIM is one. I know that OWASP recently released their uh, security champions guide. So that has some, some good information in it too. Uh, so getting on to the discussion point, you know, we wanted to have some questions. And so I'll, I'll kind of kick this off as far as how do you identify your champions. Uh, I am interested in hearing about how others are doing this too, right? That, like I said, there's no one way to go about doing this. Um, and there's pros and cons to each, each way that you choose to do it. So I'd love to hear about how others are doing it too, uh, or what experiences people have had, because we're always looking to continuously improve our programs. Uh, and I, and I want to, you know, I, there's value in that sharing that information.